pledge thing and uh, writing in. Um, let's start with the first question. I have. A, I like your choice of actress, Anne Hesh. Why did you decide to pick her? Um, we picked Anne because she, a, she's a great actress, and also because she had gone to one of my producing partners and mentioned that she had a dream about doing a horror movie, and it was right at the very, very beginning of casting. And he came to me and thought it was a little bit of a premonition. So we, we talked to her and we showed her the script and she was interested. And that's, that's how Anne got picked. Let's see, were you on set for any of the filming of uh, Nothing Left to Fear? Unfortunately, um, I was only on set for one day. Um, we had scheduled the filming for way before the tour started, but it got backed up. The filming uh, schedule got backed up and backed up until it went straight into the tour. So when we were on the U.S. tour, they were filming, so I was only there for a day. Uh, did you ever think about acting and Nothing Left to Fear? Would you consider in the future? No, I, uh, I, I have no uh, prospects for acting. Thanks. <laughs> All right, as far as the creative process is concerned, what's the difference between writing a soundtrack and a traditional album? Um, let's see. Well, the thing about writing for a soundtrack is that it, it for some reason, having that story and having sort of a, a, a concept, especially in horror, uh, a sort of a vibe and a mood, I tend to write a lot more. i sort of more of a composer, and I'm writing... Um, uh, for for different kinds of uh, sort of feelings throughout the the story and and trying to establish a certain vibe for a particular scene and I write completely different uh, in that uh, context than I do when I'm writing you know say a rock and roll song for a band to play live so it's interesting I I discovered that as I started doing the scoring thing more and more that I would really go off into a whole different uh, sort of area uh, composing than I do for a band, so it's it's actually been a lot of fun. All right, can we expect to hear the song "Nothing Left to Fear" on the next tour? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm I'm considering uh, re-recording it maybe for the next record, um, and not doing it with bass and drums is a certain section that I think would sound great with bass and drums. So if I do that, then it's quite possible it could be a song that we would play live. For a movie harder than making regular CD songs? Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, that's a good question. I, I, I guess it's, it's different, but I mean, I don't think one is harder than the other. Uh, for this particular movie, there was a lot of orchestration that was written by uh, Nicholas O'Toole, who is my composing partner on this movie, and uh, and what he does is just mind blowing. And so what I would do is I would just write different things, and then he would uh, basically transpose them into these mini mini instruments. And uh, and that if I had to do that on my own would make it much more complicated. But since I was just writing uh, my parts on guitar, he was really doing most of the work. All right, let's see. What is my all-time favorite horror movie? I get asked this all the time. Um, my first go-to one is the original Omen with, with uh, Gregory Peck and Lee Remick. I thought that was one of the best, w most well-written horror movies, and it was such a, a, a dramatic movie and such a great concept, and it's always been one of my favorites. But another one that came to mind uh, the other day was, was The Fly, the original Fly, which is sort of horror slash uh, science fiction, but that's another one. I have a lot of favorites. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's see, what's the next question? Uh, how did you pick the set for the church? Um, there was a scout that went out, a location scout that went out and uh, looked for different churches and sent photographs back. And the church that we found in, in Louisiana just fit perfectly. Will it be a premiere in Los Angeles? Yes, there'll be a premiere in Los Angeles on the 4th of October, but I don't have a location yet. Um, but I will definitely be posting that location as soon as I get it. Let's see. 
there's other songs aside from Nothing Left to Fear play. Uh, are there? No. No, there's there's no other songs that uh, I worked with Miles on on this uh, on this soundtrack. Just uh, the nothing nothing left of your theme song, and that was it. Let's see, will there be instrumental tracks? The whole album is instrumental, with the exception of the theme song. Okay, when did you? Uh, what did you do when you were on this? <laughs> um, I basically, you know, hung out the entire day and night, for that matter, um, just watching. It was I was there for the carnival scene, uh, which is a daytime, nighttime shoot. So I was just there watching the playback on the uh, monitors and and uh, making comments and suggestions here and there. But uh, Anthony had it pretty much under control, so I was really more or less observing. Um, we are pretty involved with the whole movie or just mainly the music part are you planning another um yeah i was involved with the the movie from its inception from uh from developing the script uh, uh picking a director casting uh location um uh further script development because we had a, a a limited budget and a limited amount of time to shoot so there was a lot of stuff being taken out of the script um and so on. So yeah, and then the, you know, as much as I could be involved in the the mixing and and whatnot, um, yeah, I was involved all the way through. And then of course, yeah, there was the score. Let's see, uh, one to ten. How scary is the movie? I that, that I can't tell you. Um, I'd like to. I'd like for you guys to sort of rate that. Uh, uh, how scary is the movie? I think it's really great, though. Uh, who had the idea for the name of the movie Nothing Left to Fear? Um, the original script was called Nothing to Fear, and we sort of toyed with that name for a while, and we were considering calling it Stall, but um, we decided against that. And then when Miles and I came up with the song Nothing Left to Fear, because I I'd, I'd, I'd asked Miles not to be too literal as far as the song was concerned. So we changed the name from Nothing to Fear to Nothing Left to Fear. And then my partner and the director liked Nothing Left to Fear better. So that's how it became the title. Will there be a sequel? Uh, that's, it's, it's definitely uh, lends itself to a sequel, but I don't know yet. Will you be making a cameo in the film? Um, no. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what do you think a horror movie needs to have to be successful? Um, well, you know, it depends. Success is is all on how you look at it. If you're talking about making a movie that's going to make $100 million, there's a lot of different formulas. That's not what we were aiming for. I think success for us was more making a movie that we really liked. And, uh, you know, in those terms, it was about making a movie that was a good story, that had good characters and was scary but not necessarily scary because it was gory but more scary because of the tension and the suspense and so on so i think we achieved that but i don't know if it's going to be commercially successful because it's nothing like um what a lot of the successful movies are uh these days although this a couple of the new ones uh like the conjuring are a lot more along the lines of what i'm into than some of the other sort of uh slasher movies that that we all know and love all right in future in any future movie would you like the conspirators working on the soundtrack as well um it, it really depends on uh, the story and the type of movie that it is. Like in Nothing Left to Fear, automatically when I read the script, I knew that it wasn't going to be a guitar driven soundtrack. Um, I knew that it needed something a little bit more orchestral and more sound design involved. And, uh, and that's the way that that went. But if there was a movie that, or a script that lent itself to more of a sort of rock band kind of setting, then yeah, maybe I could do it with the conspirators. Let's see. Do your next uh, do your next record will also be shown on PledgeMusic.com or just like oh I see. Will the next record be on Pledge Music? Um, I, I I probably not, but maybe I don't know. We might do something with Pledge Music. Um, that remains to be seen. So yeah, I can't really answer that yet. Did you expect producing a film to la uh, to take so to last so much time? So it takes so much time. Um, well, I, since this is the first production uh, effort I've done, um, I have to say that the movie business is very, very, very slow. Um, 
And so I do, I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't have any real expectations, but I've learned a lot along the way. And, uh, you know, now next time I get into making a movie, I will expect it to be a long process. And yes, I'm planning on doing another one. Um, what do you find easier, the music process or the movie process? I think, uh, the music process is easier, um, especially because I've been doing it for so long. But in a lot of ways, they're, they're very similar as well. Um, a, a lot of the same components go into both. Would I do any more soundtracks to scores in the future? Um, definitely. I don't want to make it my day job, but you know, when interesting things come along that, that I feel inspired by and that I could sort of lend myself to, I definitely you know, love the process of writing to an actual image and, and, and writing to a story. Uh, do you intend to make movies in other genres? No, I, I think uh, horror, um, uh, science fiction are the two things that most interest me. I couldn't imagine uh, getting into doing a romantic comedy, although a, a comedic horror movie might be fun. So, all right, will Nothing Left to Fear be released in cinemas? It's going to be released in cinemas uh, on the 4th in five, sta uh, five states. Uh, Illinois, uh, let's say cities, Chicago, New York, Boston, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. Uh, who designed the cover of the movie? Uh, let's see. That's a good question. It, we, we haven't actually released the cover of the movie yet. The movie poster uh, hasn't come out. So you guys haven't seen the actual movie poster. All the other ideas have, have basically come from Anthony Leonardi, who's the director, and he's a fantastic artist, a storyboard artist for the movie. And uh, that's where all those came from. All right. Uh, the official poster of the movie should be coming out pretty soon. I'm not sure exactly when yet, but I would imagine in the coming weeks. And uh, see, how did you choose the actors and why? Were you involved in the casting? Um, I was involved in the casting and uh, let's see, Anne Hesch uh, was one of the first ones we brought on board and her husband in real life, James Tupper, played her husband. And they were just a natural fit and they're both actors, so that worked perfectly. Uh, Clancy Brown was somebody that I wanted um, who just happened to be friends with uh, Clifton Collins Jr., uh, who's a good friend of mine, and got me in touch with him. So he's one of my favorite actors from way back, um, all the way back to Highlander. Um, and then uh, the, the little boy that play, uh, played Chris, and I can't remember his real name, I don't have it in front of me, he was just the, the, the best guy out of all the kids that we had that came to the casting call. He was just terrific, and that's how we picked him. And then uh, Anthony picked, uh, oh, I need all the actors' names now. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, I forgot his first name, but he's Gregory Peck's, uh, I think he's his nephew or something. Anyway, Anthony picked him. And then Jennifer Stone uh, was somebody that I was not familiar with, but Anthony really liked. And uh, she just did a great, uh, uh, you know, she did the casting and she was just perfect. So that's basically the whole cast. Oh, this is the dead time you're talking about. Um, what did you think of Comic-Con? Was that your first time there? Would I go again? Uh, that, that was my first time at Comic-Con, and I would definitely go again. Uh, it was amazing. It, there's a, a part of me that really loves all the sort of like uh, the toys and, and some of the marketing stuff that goes along with horror movies and science fiction movies. And so I was like a kid in a candy store there, but I couldn't go on the floor, which was really frustrating. So next time I go, I'm going to go in costume. Um, see, I talked to Rob, Rob Zombie about filmmaking. We had a, a, a brief conversation at one point when I was just in the beginning stages of, uh, getting nothing left to fear together and we did some shows together or did a festival together and uh you know th i thought it might be interesting uh to do a movie of his that i produced at some point so we'll see a main reason why i love horror movies oh i've i've been into horror movies since i was uh 
I, you know, probably three or four years old. Uh, when I was in England, there was a lot of Hammer movies that came out. And uh, I remember getting into those, uh, you know, when I was very little. My mom turned me on to all the classic horror movies. And then my dad got me into all the horror literature. And I, I, I think, uh, it, I don't know if there's a real reason uh, why I love horror so much. Um, I mean, I like the monsters. I love the darkness of it. Uh, I love the uh, uh, the whole fear factor and the adrenaline, you know, rush that comes out of the tension and so on. So, so it's just something that I never even stopped and thought about. I've just always been a fan. Let's see, if I could have worked on any film ever made, which one would you have picked and why? Oh. Um, that's a pretty broad question. I mean, there's a lot of great uh, horror movies that I don't necessarily know or think that I would have need to have been involved in, but uh, probably there's a bunch, there's a couple movies that I'd probably like to remake. Um, there's one in particular uh, called The uh, uh, Abominable Dr. Fives, which is an old Vincent Price movie that people aren't real familiar with. And I would love to, to get involved in a remake of that. All right, how many tracks are on the soundtrack? There's a lot of tracks on the soundtrack. Um, I think there's about 30. But, you know, in, in soundtracks you have... Uh, is some some bits that are only a minute long, some bits that are only 30 seconds long, some that are two minutes long. They're, so so when you put them all, to, when you separate them into tracks, it turns out to be a lot. But it's actually, you know, the the same length as a long playing album. Uh, how did I get started uh, involved in Nothing Left to Fear production and music score? Um, well, I got involved with the production. Um, my one of my producing partners uh, saw that I was uh, such a, a horror enthusiast, and I had a definite idea about what I liked in horror movies, uh, in contemporary horror movies, and what I didn't like. And in the course of conversation, he thought I'd be a good con candidate uh, for producing, and he set out to get me a bunch of scripts and to see which ones I liked and which ones I didn't like. And over the course of time, I picked a handful of scripts and there was only a couple that would be within the budget for a first time, uh, for a first time production. Uh, and w one being nothing left to fear. And then, you know, getting into the music sc score obviously was just sort of a natural fit. Uh, let's see, what's my favorite scene of nothing left to fear and the most difficult scene to shoot? I can't tell you what my favorite scene is because it'll be giving too, too much away of the movie. And as far as the most difficult scene to shoot, I didn't shoot it, so I, I can't really say. Which guitar, uh, which guitars did you use to record the Nothing to Fear score tracks? Um, I used my Gold Top uh, Les Paul that I have at my house. And uh, that was basically it. I just used the one guitar. Um, see, who's your favorite character in the movie and why uh, do you identify with any of them? I think uh, Rebecca is, uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite characters in the movie. And Jennifer uh, Stone's character, Mary, is another one. And then uh, the character that Clancy Brown plays, which is the pastor, uh, pastor Kinsman, is also a another favorite. They're, the whole cast is really good, though. They all have really good parts. Uh, see, are you working with Miles Kennedy on the new conspirator and the conspirators on a new album? Yes, I am. Does slasher films have much to offer in the future? Yeah, I'm. I'm looking into which is going to be the next production I'm going to get into. Which actor would you like to act in a film I'm producing? Well, I'd like in in a future film that I will produce. I would love to get Gary Oldman. I think he would make. Uh, uh, I think he's a great candidate for a scary movie. So, let's see, is there going to be a 3D version of the movie? No, there's not going to be a 3D version of the movie. We didn't have the budget for that. Uh, would you consider producing a Stephen King film adaptation, remake of a Stephen King film? Um, I probably wouldn't get into remaking uh, uh, a Stephen King film, but... Uh, you know, there are some Stephen King stories that haven't been made into movies, and I would love to be responsible for making one of the better Stephen King films. Is there going? No, there's not going to be a 3D version. Uh, 
uh, you know, unless for some some reason somebody wants to uh, go back and and convert this movie into a 3D movie, but maybe one of the future movies. I would love to do an old school type of 3D. You know, uh, 3D has gotten so refined over the years that it's gotten to the point where it's more of a, a texture uh, 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 of a visual than the old school 3D, which was things jumping out of the camera. Are you going to produce any other films? Uh, yeah, I'm going to produce other films. Are you working on any now, and how do you balance it all? Um, right now, I haven't started actual production on a new movie. Uh, still sort of going through scripts and trying to pick the one that would be uh, the best candidate for the next film. What do you think of today's horror movies, and how do they differ from uh, Nothing Left to Fear? Um, well, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a matter of taste. There's... There's uh, some really well-made uh, sort of torture porn <laughs> horror movies that are really well-made and, 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 and very disturbing, and I can't knock those because they're actually good, but it's not really my cup of tea. Um, so, you know, the, the, the newer movies that uh, are more story-driven and more about the characters and more subconsciously uh, or not subconsciously, but are, are more psychologically scary are the ones that I tend to like. My favorite one at this point is The Conjuring. I think that is an amazing movie and probably one of the best new horror movies I've seen in a long time. All right. Uh, are there any plans for the movie to be released in other countries? If so, Brazil is Brazil in the plans? Well, the deal is, is, is uh, it's going straight to DVD, like right after them. I think... Uh, the 6th of October, it goes to DVD and then VOD on the 8th. So, um, yeah, it'll be worldwide at that point. Uh, are there any subtitles in the DVD? Uh, not that I know of. Let's see, what uh, did inspire you to become the producer of the horror movies? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I was sort of blindsided by it. I didn't uh, have any aspirations to to actually become a producer, but when I was given the, uh, the opportunity to do it, um, then I found that I had a, a, a real aptitude for it and a real passion for it. So uh, it's pretty exciting, you know, because it is so new and it wasn't something that I planned on doing. Would I ever cast Alice Cooper in a future film? If there was something that Alice was into and something I thought that, that would be good for Alice, definitely. Uh, which horror director and producers do you rate highest uh, on your list of greatest of all time? Well, Sam Raimi is definitely one of the greatest uh, horror directors. A lot of the other directors, um, you know, it, 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 the contemporary ones, a lot of directors are great directors that just do one horror movie and they don't that's there are not really a lot of directors that only do horror movies that I am uh, particularly into. Let's see. Uh, do you think the, those torture movies are any scarier because of all the blood? I don't necessarily think... I think that's the big difference between um, what I consider a good horror movie and what uh, is uh, more of a disturbing visual. Um, the torture scenes are unnerving. I don't necessarily think that they're scarier. I think the blood just sort of makes it a little bit more... Um, unbearable to watch, you know? I mean, depending, uh, you know, I think blood is appropriate uh, given the scene or whatever, but when you start to really focus on the more and more blood for blood's sake, then it becomes less scary and just becomes more uh, sort of uh, uncomfortable to watch. All right, did you take part on uh, writing the script or any editing? Um, I was involved for some of the editing. I didn't, I didn't actually write the script, but my producing partner, Rob Eric, did rewrite a lot of the script and then, of course, reread it and thought it was great. And then uh, as far as editing, if there was ever a time that they needed an idea from me, I was there. Uh, are you more of a Freddy Krueger, Krueger or Jason fan? Um, I'd say that I'm probably more of a Freddy Krueger fan. I think more the more fantastic it is, uh, is 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 uh, usually the, the direction that I'll sort of lean towards. Is the director position what you expected? Well, I'm not a director, and I, I uh, don't have any uh, aspirations to become a director at this point in time. 
How Do You Rate Psycho? Psycho is one of my all-time favorite uh, horror movies. I saw it when I was really young, and uh, and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Are you going to do anything else with Angry Birds in the future? <laughs> what was it like working with Angry Birds? That's a whole different subject. We'll have to move on. That's it? Uh, were you on the set of any of the filming for Nothing Left to Fear? I mentioned earlier, I was only on the set for uh, one day and night, unfortunately. Yeah, when it comes down to it, my first and foremost priority is still, uh, you know, obviously my band and touring and all that kind of stuff. So if there's a conflict, uh, obviously I'm going to lead towards the tour side but I have to admit I, I trusted Anthony uh, Leonardi and and also my partners to handle anything I wasn't really worried about it I just wanted to be I'm sorry to, to, to figure out what kind of films I want to go after next I don't think um, psychotic human beings with chainsaws and stuff is really the direction uh, although Leatherface was classic um, but I think it's more along the lines of fantastic uh, monsters do you like Japanese horror films? Or uh, have you seen any? Um, well, I think the the with, with uh, the Grudge was one of the ones that I thought was really great. Um, uh, you know, and then all I don't know if Godzilla movies actually fall into that, but I was a big Monster Zero, Rodan, Gamera, Godzilla f fanatic as a kid. I think we just cut off. Okay, sorry, so uh, the guy's computer um, timed out. Anyway, so we're going to start wrapping this up. I just wanted to say thank you for you know chiming in and giving me your questions, and I hope I managed to answer. Uh, as best as I possibly could and uh, I, I would like to say that at some point towards the completion of the the next slash Miles Kennedy and conspirators record we'll do this uh, definitely do this again uh, another you chat kind of stream so thank you and uh, come see the movie and we'll see you later cheers